Everybody, I'm Ty, and I am in Oklahoma City's Midtown area today, and there's actually a row of uh, large uh, residential looking buildings. They're actually offices, and uh, the one I'm at today just got this uh, really nice yellow brick here, but I've been told that there is a plexiglass uh, on one of these windows here, and I find that plexiglass window, and then I'm going to get the glass cut, and I'm going to replace the glass. I'm going to show you how to do all that. So I have uh, I found the window that the uh, that the owner wants to replace, and so I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a measurement on it. Now to get that measurement, I'm gonna use my fast cap tape measure. Really like these things. Uh, the main reason I like them is that uh, they're what some people call a uh, chump tool because uh, they've got all your uh, fractional markings there. Now using my tape measure, I'm gonna measure from. This spot right here, kind of like right where the end of the wood starts and the glazing begins to the other side right there. And then from the bottom at that same spot to the top at that same. Now, mostly what I have used to get this old uh, glazing off and silicone has just been the 3 8 chisel. And so you can see here, I've got a lot of silicone that's been put on, but then also here, there's putty. So it's just been a matter of uh, working that putty off. Of course, this doesn't go really well one-handed, one but just keep working that stuff off until it all comes off, and it will eventually come off. So now that I've got the uh, glazing all removed, I'm gonna go uh, step over here to the pickup and I'm gonna call uh, call the shop and get some glass cut. Before I make the call and order the glass, I need to uh, figure out what size of glass I need. Now the opening I measured was 32 by 20 and an eighth. Now I need to back off a 16th of an inch off of this, both hot width and height, so that I can have a piece of glass that fits really well. And I'm gonna just use my chump tool here, my tape measure, to do that so if i'm just going to back a 16th off off and, and most of you know this is pretty pretty easy but i'm just going to 32 mark and there is i'm just go back 1 16th well that's going to be 15 sixteenths let me make a note of that 15 sixteenths and then of course that's going to be 31. by once again, this is pretty simple, but you know, it never hurts to explain. Here I am again at my 20 and an eighth, and I want to back 1 16th off of that. So that's going to be 1 16th. So these little red marks are actually your 16th. So that's going to be 1 16th. So I'm still going to be 20 and 1 16th. So I'm going to make my phone call to the shop and order a 31 and 15 16th by 20 and 1 16th. Hey Katie, it's Ty. Hey, can you cut me a piece of glass real quick? So I need the glass to be uh, 31 and 15 16th by 31 and 15 16th. Uh-huh. By 20 and a 16th. Yep. Just regular, regular clear. Use something out of the, uh, maybe out of the remnants, the scraps. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Katie. Bye. So as a small business owner, things don't always go as planned. I had every intention on uh, finishing this window yesterday. And so you can see I'm wearing a different shirt, but, uh, when you have six kids and uh, one of them has a track you have to pick her up from, then you got to get the other one to viola practice. Uh, things are getting a little bit nuts, and before you know it, it's dark. But I'm back here. It's morning. Looking forward to getting this project uh, done. Now, if you're liking what you're watching so far, please, uh, please subscribe. Hit the notifications so you get all of our videos. And as I've pointed out, the tools that we're using, that I'm using today, are, of course, only thing I would recommend to you is something I would use personally. All those are going to be in the description below, so check those out. So 
I've got the piece of glass that my uh, shop cut, and I'm going to go test fit it uh, real quick and pray that I don't break it in the process. Okay, so now that I'm up here, I'm going to clean the glass bed, and I'm going to back bed my uh, glazing rabbit before I install my glass. To clean the glass bed, I'm just going to use a 3 8 chisel, and I may use my beekeeper's tool just a little bit. All right, so I've cleaned up my glass bed with my uh, 3 8 chisel, and now I am actually uh, going to be bedding and putting some putty here in the bed. And I'm just doing that by taking my Sarco and my Lamsum bent putty knife and just running a little bit, not too much, along the glazing rabbit right here. So I push the glass, it will help create a uh, long-term seal. Now, there are all different types of uh, product that you can use to do this. Uh, and really, you know, I I'm not a type of person to say that you should have to use one over the other. Uh, as you can see, I, I am using regular old putty. I could definitely understand why a person might would want to use something else. If you use something else to do this method, leave me a uh, comment in the description and or down below, leave me a comment. So one of the things I didn't consider when committing to making this video was how difficult this was gonna be on a ladder with a uh, mini tripod using my iPhone 11. But I'm gonna do the best I can now using one hand and uh, hopefully you're gonna get a full demonstration of how this works. I've already set this glass up here. It, uh, it definitely fits. And now I am going to pin the glass. And to do that, I am gonna be using an old school uh, Red Devil point driver. Now, you could definitely use just the pins that you can buy in the home center. You could also pick one of these up from our store. Uh, that's woodwindowrescue.com forward slash store. We have these available from CRL. They work really good. This is the one that I keep in my toolbox, this old school one. Uh, so I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. So I've already got this loaded and you put some wax pins, they go right down in here. This thing works kind of like a, like a staple gun. Uh, but it's just gonna be a matter of, you know, this is where I've glazed. It's just gonna be a matter of, uh, I've already got one here. I'm gonna put two in per side. And so I'm just gonna pull the handle and there we go. Uh, and then I'm gonna put two across the bottom one there, one there. Okay, so now it's time to glaze. I'm back to glazing, and uh, I'm gonna be using just simply my Sarco putty and my bent putty knife, and I'm gonna be uh, hoping that I don't uh, drop any of this stuff or worse, drop my phone. So right now what I'm doing is I'm just uh, gonna spread some out here. are kind of chewed up so I'm gonna kind of pack that a little heavy and then I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna pack it down all right so now it is time for me to glaze and I've got it all packed in here I packed you know so it's looking good and I'm just going to rest my knife. And you've seen 100 glazing videos if you've seen one. They're all pretty much the same. I'm going to rest my knife right here, and I'm going to pull it across. And I want my glazing line to match up to my interior profile so that you cannot see my glazing from the inside. So I feel like I would be cheating if I didn't show you how difficult it is going to be to glaze this uh top line so i am going to show you that i'm going to show you packing it in and i'm going to show you glazing it hopefully i don't embarrass myself too much but give me a break i'm doing this one-handed so i'm just going to take it slow make sure i'm packing it in nice and nice and good because i need it to stick and it's going to want to fall out it's going to want to fall out and of course this would be easier if i was not trying to make a youtube video 
All right, so here we go with the glazing one-handed, upside down. Not too bad, need to clean that up a little bit. There you go, that's a little thick. Cut that back. I'm gonna have a messy, uh, messy sill to clean up, but that's not too big of a problem. Try to be as safe as I can. Three points of contact when you're on a ladder, folks. Don't be leaning over things. That's why you want to get these bars that you may have seen on my uh, on my ladder. So thanks so much for hanging out here with me as I replace this window pane. All in all, it's a pretty good experience other than uh, working one-handed and working uh, on a second floor. And that just goes to show you, when you're working on a second floor, make sure you use uh, safety first. And a good ladder like this, like the little giant with the stabilizer bars, is going to be the best way to go. Uh, I have put a, uh, a link for all of the tools and materials I used in the description below. So check those out. Pick up some of those if you don't have them. And I really want to encourage you to subscribe to our channel. That really helps, helps us know uh, what videos you like, what videos to make more of. Also hit the bell notification so you get the newest ones we upload. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, you can R-I-Y, you can rescue it yourself.